Jessica Sprague has this really awesome tutorial on her website for adding drop shadows to acrylic elements. And um, it's drawing a lot of attention and I've received quite a few <laughs> questions about it. And so I've decided to create this tutorial. Someone asked me if I hadn't uh, had a method to do this uh, in a different way that I shared several years ago and um, the answer is yes and no and uh, let me just go ahead and, and get into the tutorial and you'll see uh, what I mean by that. Here is an arrow that I made using the glass action from Atomic Cupcake. Um, it's very much like the acrylic uh, elements that are being sold out there right now and um, just to show you why this is a problem I'm going to go ahead and add a soft edge drop shadow to this element now you're going to see that it made the, the element darker and it's not quite as see-through um, as it was before and so that's why we need a special method to add drop shadows to um, opaque items. Now what the what what the person was remembering from a couple years ago was a method I shared um, for utilizing uh, vellum and you can uh, quickly make a simple piece of vellum by drawing a square creating a new layer which I already did and filling it with white and then simply lowering the opacity to it and uh, this is something I recommend as something quick to do especially if you're trying to journal on a busy uh, patterned background such as this one now you've got a perfect element that you can use um, for uh, journaling on now um, if I apply a drop shadow to it having created in this in this method it works fine but if you would have brought this in to Photoshop elements as an op opaque piece of vellum um, in a in a ping file and you tried to add the drop shadow it would um, add uh, would make it darker just as I showed you it did with my arrow and so here's the method that we had done previously. If you hold down your control key and click here on the layers palette to get marching ants around that piece of vellum and which could be any shape not just square and then make your paper layer the active layer and I'm going to hit control J on it and you're going to see that I have now just made a brand new square I'm sorry, rectangle shape out of the background layer and now I can add the drop shadow to that layer and that is how we had previously um, had a workaround for um, opaque items and um, adding the drop shadows. Of course uh, it works very easily if um, your opaque item is just on one layer. If this if this uh, piece of vellum was uh, partly on paper and partly on a photo, that's going to make it a little bit more tricky to add that drop shadow. And since uh, mostly I use this just for uh, my journaling right on the paper, I uh, this is the only method I I have used. However. Jessica has come up with this great idea and I you know I used um, the uh, difference mode um, in one of my recent tutorials so I was aware of it and it just never dawned on me to use it in this matter manner and this is just really awesome she's she's an awesome lady however up here she has a step in here and um, it's confusing to uh, people because it's not something that they uh, utilize often and um, you know I must confess that if I were to unless I did this often 
Um, if I were to want to do this again, I'd have to keep coming back to her website to check on um, this to uh, remember. I'm 